Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Sustainability Series, the video podcast that discusses all things centered around food sustainability and the greater good. I'm your host uh, for this fourth and final podcast, David Singleton, and my, po- my co-host today, Roberta Schwaber. I hope I've said that right, Roberta. And today we're going to talk about Foodworks that has been helping some people during the pandemic. And, uh, and we're going to hear some stories right from, right from the front line and from the families who have been uh, getting some great benefit from, from Foodworks. We've got two fabulous guests today. We have Katie and Magdalena, and uh, they're going to share their experience and talk to us about Foodworks and, uh, and the benefits they get from it and, and their reasons for using the organization. So welcome Magdalena and, and Katie. Thanks for joining us. And uh, it's really, really super to have you on our podcast series. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies. Um, just to start, I was wondering if you could tell us about um, how you came across this, uh, this organization and what actually made you start using it, um, Katie. Um. One of my friends uh, volunteers for Foodworks. Uh, she lives in the mm-hmm. next village to me and uh, has been taking food that is uh, gluts or bit, things that can't be passed on and distributing them for donations around the villages. And so I, I came across it that way. Um, when one of the sites moved to near where I worked, I thought I'd go and investigate and I've been using it since then. That's great. What about you, Magdalena? I came across Foodworks via social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram. Um, and to be honest with you, I really love the idea of, you know, keeping the food waste to zero. And it's it's absolutely amazing. It is amazing. So, yeah, the power of yeah. social media. That's how I came across. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> Definitely. What do you use it for, Katie? Tell us how you get great use out of Foodworks. Um, I, I use it because it's, um, I, I work in farming. Um, mm. I, I, I supply, my company supplies animal feed. I've worked in organic agriculture for the entirety of my life. And when I saw how much food waste was going in there, I mm. um, just felt um, mad that all the hard work that a lot of people I know and work with and have done for 20 odd years is ending up in the bin. And it's coming from all over the world as well and ending up in the bin. It, it, it was madness. So I, um, it, I use it for that. Um, I, I don't like seeing the food waste at, at all. Um, yeah. when I know how much hard work has gone into the production of it. Um, and also, it's it's helping, you know, for me as the sort of time saving type thing. I don't need to go around supermarkets or different supermarkets. I, and it, it makes cooking a bit more interesting because you never know what you're going to get each week. <laughs> in our last podcast, uh, we we interviewed Jean in in America, and she wrote a book, uh, Cooking with Scraps. Mm. And honestly, the there's zero food waste in her house. <laughs> <laughs> and and yes. it was, and it was so cool to see you know just what she's what she's really getting out of her food. And uh, so, so that, that's really, really good. So, so do you get like a box every week or how does it work with you? Yeah, I, I do anyway. I go on a Tuesday usually and sometimes on a Friday if uh, I'm running a bit short of things and I go and pick up one of the sort of mixed boxes. I don't, um, so that you can go in anytime between 10 and three at any of the sites and pick up a box of what they left over from all the other stuff they do. And that's what I go and get. Minimum yeah. donations a pound. I personally can afford more than that. So I give more than that. Mm. But you meat, you get um, stuff from the refrigerator and then you get dry goods, fruit and veg. And, uh, and I, I work off that. And that is literally, do you just, are you just given a box or are you yeah. going with a trolley? Yeah, or so they, you, you, um, you go in with a, a bag to collect it and you, you go up to um, the counter where the refrigerator bit is and you get to pick from the refrigerator mm depending on how much there is, you know, one, three, five items from there yeah. with your choice, then they bring you meat from the freezer. Um, you do have some control over that as well. If you don't like lamb, then you don't have to have lamb or whatever. Mm. Um, and they give you whatever is the sensible amount that week, compared, as I say, between sort of one and three pieces of meat, depending on how much they've mm. had. And then you get a box of stuff, which usually involves bread, almost always involves bread, veg, mm. um, dried goods. Um, I, I end up with croissants from the co-op and things like that. Um, so yeah, nice stuff. And yeah, and also donation. 
Yeah, and I, I think your motivation perhaps isn't necessarily to save money, is it? You're, I mean, sure, you're, are you, I, I guess you are saving money, are you, do you think? I am saving money. I'm saving a lot of money, yes. Oh, yeah. That's not the motivation for doing sure. it. I, I can't abide seeing that amount of food in the, uh, sitting yeah. there in the way. I know yeah. how much work goes into producing it in the first place, you know. That's, that's amazing. I feed for animals and then they end up dead and, and, and their meat goes in the bin. It's, it's reprehensible. <laughs> I mean, it, it is incomprehensible to think mm. that, isn't it? J yeah. Just at every, uh, you know, I was just saying before we started recording that since the students have been talking to me about food works and the work they do and the responsibilities we have, you know, uh, in, mm. in, in the commercial world or as human beings, yeah. it's, it's incredible. Magdalena, uh, your, your story is very, very different, isn't it? Uh, whereas this this is a kind of essential to your family, isn't it? Talk to us about your story, if you can. Yes, uh, I'm a single mom of one lovely boy, and when I when I moved to Sheffield, um, I had to obviously, you know, I I become unemployed, so money were really really tight, and then the pandemic hit, school closed. Um, I was lucky enough that my son was um, eligible to free school meals, uh, but obviously when the when the pandemic hit and the school were closed, there was a bit of extra strain and stress um, to myself. So when I came across uh, Foodworks as well, a the minimum donation is one pound, and as Katie said, you've got lots of different things and I used to work in hospitality so I can cook and it's very adventurous to be honest with you to create a oh, healthy okay. dishes cooked from scratch and, and and you know you're saving the environment and helping the planet as well which is brilliant yeah. and also when um, when the school were, were closed the food works organized a school meals a free school meals basically for a for children as well, which was again an extra help for me. Mm. Uh, honestly, I can't I can't stress enough how grateful and thankful I am for for this organization because you know I'm I'm sure there's lots of people like me struggling and obviously on top of making sure that you've got roof over your head and mm. and you pay the bills, food is very important as well. So yeah. I'm really glad that I don't have to worry. Mm. whether I'm mm. going to have money to put the food on the table or no because of the food work. So, yeah, I'm really grateful for that. So it is, it is amazing. So do you think um, this having this service available made you feel a bit more secure about the situation oh, and about the school meals? Definitely, definitely, to be honest with you. And um, also my, my sons loves it, you know, um, cause obviously when the, when the pandemic hit, the school was closed, so he was coming with me and he was like, mommy, can we go again? Can we go again? Cause I really <laughs> like it. <laughs> he loves the food, which, which he was getting as a school meals. And then he really enjoyed, you know, cooking alongside me and, you know, doing a bit of math, le math lessons and <laughs> weighing <laughs> stuff. Um, so, yes, 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 definitely. What kind of dishes are you making, Magdalena? Is that, you're making oh, uh, most of the time, you know, pasta with vegetables, so like rice with stews, uh, meatballs, pork chops, you name it. We can create everything. <laughs> wow, there's everything, isn't there? <laughs> yes, yes. That's really, really amazing. Well, I, I think this is an interesting one, actually, um, about because I've been looking at it from the outside world here now about the this the school meal scandal, I think, isn't it? Where I, I where I think um, they, they've been getting a box with just rubbish in it. You, you, you know, it's uh, how, how I, I, perhaps tell me a little bit about or tell the audience a little bit about how Foodworks has perhaps changed that, uh, if it has at all. Magdalena, is that your experience? Uh, yes, it is my experience. Basically, the uh, when I came across Foodworks um, in November, that was the kind of um, advert I've seen that they're offering, you know, a school meals for children, because there was, as you mentioned, the huge scandal that families which were eligible for the free school meals were getting a box from schools uh, ready for a week and 
honestly, the, the things I've seen on social media were disgraceful. You wouldn't be able to do five meals um, for a kid from what they've been getting. So Foodworks is absolutely amazing because not only you can go and pick up the box and cook for, for yourself, mm -hmm. you can also collect the cooked meals and frozen meals, which are already um, cooked and you only need a microwave or, or a hub to heat it up. And they were like spaghetti bolognese, pasta with vegetables, you know, um, mushroom stroganoff with rice, which was the quality and the taste, like literally Michelin star, guys. <laughs> Amazing. So, um, yes, that's, that, that's helped a lot because, you know, I, at least I knew that my child is having a proper meal a day, obviously, yeah. plus on top cooking, cooking with me. Um, so, yeah, that really, really, really helped. And they were for free. You just get to go with the child and... Um, you know, no question asked, no embarrassment, nothing like that. So it is, it is brilliant. I wish that Foodworks would be in every single town, city in UK, because that's amazing cause. But, you know, on uh, sorry, Kate, are you going to say something on that? I was going to say on the other side of the, the free school meals front, what I ended up helping was that there was a lot of fresh fruit that was meant to be going to schools that um, the council decided not to pick up. Um, so Foodworks got tons and tons of clementines, apples and pears, all child size in, you know, plastic bags, because they just didn't bother distributing it, even to the schools that had kids in from key workers. Now, my, you know, the people that work with me are key workers. We've been working through the entirety of this, providing animal feed to farms. And, you know, so it wasn't going to the children of my, you know, my staff members. Um, so it was, Foodworks did a lot of work getting it into food, um, but, you know, food banks uh, back into schools um, and just anywhere that would have food. And I, I took sort of six or seven boxes back and got them to the village schools around me um, to by, you know, getting the headmistress's email address and, and getting boxes of food. So the kids that were in school got some of the fresh fruit that they were meant to be having. Good grief. Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm just shocked that there is all this food, e even in summer like food works that's ready for distribution and that the council can't distribute it? Because it can't or won't distribute it, what you? Won't, at least from my understanding, but I don't know. I don't know the politics behind it, but uh, yeah, it came well. from the wholesaler who'd been asked to provide it and then couldn't get rid of it. And to Magdalena's point just there, you know, this is a kind of service that should be everywhere around, around the country. Uh, and yeah. I, and I, I, you know, as I've been learning about food works and, and the whole sustainability series that the students have been running. Um, yeah, there's, I'm aware there's a couple of similar setups in London. Um, is, are, there, are there many other places around the country? Have you found any, Roberta, or is this one of the best ones? Um, not that many. I know, as you said, there are a few in London, um, which are uh, basically the biggest ones, mm. uh, but I'm, I'm really not sure. I haven't found anything. Um, I know there's... Um, um one set up for the whole of yorkshire which is also good uh but haven't seen in any other cities to be honest which is a shame obviously because it does such a great work and as we can see from you too it, it's benefited you quite a bit and it can benefit so many other people um so just to move on i was thinking if you katie could talk us through uh, how you access it you know how easy is it to get the meals, uh, where do you usually go for it? Um, okay, so I went yeah. to Wyborn, um, which is just a warehouse. It's not the easiest to find, but once you find it, it's fine. There's reasonable parking. <laughs> it's, as uh, Magdalene said, there's no judgment. Nobody judges you on what you're, you know, why you're coming or why you're going. There's just a warehouse where you queue up and um, and go and pick up your food. Um, you, yeah it's it's very easy to get it and you see as far as the pandemic goes you see a lot less people at food works than you do if you went to the local morrisons to do your weekly shop mm -hmm. um so it's in in many ways you feel slightly safer um pandemic mm -hmm. yeah but it, it's it's simple um i did worry to start off with that you know they it was aimed at people more like magdalena but i was you know told in no uncertain terms that they just didn't want it to go into landfill and it was for everybody and as long as the yeah. is they didn't mind who took it 
Um, and so, yes, I, I do that. And I also now help um, um, a bit by distributing, you know, the excess gluts that uh, my friend Boo brings back and distribute it around where I live um, and get donations to go back to food works so it can keep going. Um, it's, That's yeah. amazing. Can you go to different warehouses? I know they have a few warehouses, they or are you do. just bound to one? No, you can go wherever you like. I go to Wyborn because I can go there and back in my lunch hour. Mm -hmm. and it's near enough for me to drive out. It's about 15 minutes down the road from where I work, and I go out in my lunch hour and I pick stuff up and I come back again. It's nice and simple. That's so... so how easy is that? It's really easy. Yeah, it is completely easy. And I come back with, you know, a, a random mix of stuff, but, you know, it, and it does make life more interesting. It's uh, made, changed my cooking. I eat a much wider variety of foods now mm -hmm. than, up with things that I go, well, oh, oh, goodness, more beef mince. What shall I do with it this time? <laughs> um, there, there was a television program when I was uh, in teens and early 20s called Ready, Steady, Cook, which um, I, I, David knows. And it does feel a little bit like this. You know, I've got three potatoes, a carrot, a pepper and, and some sausages. What am I going to do with it this week? Yeah. Um, but it but it then makes your cooking more interesting. Yeah, so, very much. Yeah, it, it's it's been good. I would go to other places if they were nearby, but it really mm -hmm. worked fine for me. It's a useful and open and easy access. Amazing. What about you, Magdalena? Oh, it's extremely easy as well. It is, it is. You just you just have to make sure that you've got the back with you, a face mask. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you go and you collect and you go and you collect and and people are so friendly yeah. the volunteers are absolutely amazing so um i'm willing to to join the team as my son goes back to school now so it would be brilliant mm -hmm. to give back to the community as well and and volunteer uh, uh, for good works because i really love the cause and it's amazing yeah that's that's yeah, it's, really it's great magdalena it's the one thing I would do if I wasn't working full time. I would go and help, but um, it's yeah, full time job stops it, so I do donate other ways. I know. Well, I think you're doing your bit, Katie, and yeah. supporting it. It sounds like you're talking to a lot of people as well to kind of. Spread no, it. <laughs> most most of our lorry drivers now know about it, um, and yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I hand flower. If there's lots of flowers, flowers end up going around the office, so people do know about it. Oh, I hope they don't oh. have much food waste themselves. Do they, are they, Roberta? Are they able to use all the food that they get? Do you know? I think most of the time. I think this is the point. You know, uh, once they save the food, they try to get rid of it. And um, I know sometimes uh, they even have um, a fridge with things that have to go today. And that one, they just gave it for a minimum donation and they can take anything. So people come in and can take anything they want. Mm. Uh, so that it, it's not, nothing is wasted that day. So uh, yeah, they definitely do their best to get rid of everything. That's um, fantastic. And how many locations are there? Because it sounds like there's a few locations. Um, yeah, I think there are a few around the city. Um, five or six, if I'm not wrong, um, but it's, um, you know, it's so much easier if it's spread out to people from everywhere uh, can easily go and, um, and access food works. So um, I'm pretty sure um, as Magdalena and Katie were, were talking about, um, it's just so easy to just go in your lunch break, five minutes there and back and just get, um, get your lunch. You don't have to worry about cooking. You don't have to worry about uh, going grocery shopping and mm. it's just great to have such a thing available I think yeah. um, and uh, Magdalena I just wanted to quickly touch on um, how easy is it to get the school meals did you did you say you just have to go with your child or how how do you do that now to get a to get a school meal you have to take your child with you and then mm -hmm. they they just ask you, would you like a school meals for your child as well? And how many? Because oh. at one time you can get up to five meals. So that's easy. That's easy. You just have to come with the child. So obviously they see that you've got the child who needs them. <laughs> uh, yes. And also I was I was really surprised because when I moved to Sheffield, obviously I met people. Uh, some of them were living 5, 10, 15 years even in Sheffield. I, they never, ever heard about that organization so when i spread the word they were absolutely shocked and amazed and now more and more people are using it on a, on an even daily basis sometimes when there are families of like four or five kids and 
Um, so they're saving a lot and it's, it's, it's a godsend, honestly, it is. So, mm. yeah. That's right. <laughs> So, so we can see how FoodWorks has benefited your two families and quite a lot and how accessible and easy it is uh, to use and also how you might want to give back to FoodWorks, be it volunteer or continue to support or um, uh, in many different ways. And, uh, and I guess also how it's changed your cooking at home. So we've gone from ready, steady cook to meatballs and pastas and 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 all sorts so uh which is really really fantastic uh is there anything else that we, we've missed off that you'd like to talk about magdalena or katie no i just i the more people that know about it the better yeah. uh, I, as i say we mm. work really hard at our industry to supply food to people and it is wrong that a, it's makes it's expensive and difficult to get for people like Magdalena, and B, that it goes to waste. That it is is so planned that and so regimented on dates and things like that that mm. food gets wasted. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, food works. I've seen that they've got pig bins for because it goes to the local city farm. Uh, you know, food waste. It goes to composting. It goes to anaerobic digestion. All the stuff they can't use. It just seems you know they they're trying their best mm. not to let it end up rotting in plastic in landfill yeah very much what about you magdalena exactly the same exactly the same so um yes i'm really really pleased and i and i've you know i follow food works or social media as well so i i can see how amazing work they're doing and um the locations they opening more and more um it's 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 just brilliant. It's just brilliant. The more people know about it, the better. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's our planet. We have to we have to look after it. Yeah. So. Definitely. Um, just to wrap up, I want to ask you if if there was one thing you could tell uh, our listeners to uh, encourage them to use or support Foodworks, you know, what would it be, Katie? What would you tell them? Um. It's, it's a simple way of having an influence on sort of saving the planet a little bit by reducing our impact on it. But it's also that that um, way of saving the planet has no judgment to it. That they do not judge you for going and getting the food there. Whether you're like me because you want to reduce food waste and you, I could perfectly afford to live off, you know, um, a Morgenson shop every week. Um, and or you're in Magdalena's situation. There is, it's friendly, it's open, and no judgment way of saving the planet. That's gorgeous. That's great. What about you, Magdalena? What would you tell them? What I would tell, uh, it's fantastic place, guys. Honestly, it is fantastic place. You feel welcome from the minute you enter the building to the second you leave the building nobody ever judge you doesn't matter your background it, it just doesn't matter it's absolutely fantastic place it might be not for everyone because everyone is different but at least go try and see for yourself because i'm sure you will be surprised you will be surprised <laughs> that's fantastic well you you've been you've been a huge billboard uh, for uh, Food Works, which and thank you for joining us, Magdalena and Katie. And uh, I'm sad this is our last episode of the sustainability series. And uh, Roberta, perhaps you can just tell the audience and uh, who's listening and watching um, how they can help Food Works and the kind of help that they really do need. Yeah. So first of all, I just want to thank you, Katie and Magdalena, for being here today and sharing your stories. Um, thank you, David, for being such an amazing host throughout. And um, thank you so much to all the people who have donated and supported Foodworks so far. Um, it's really just this easy. And it's great to hear stories from people like you and how Foodworks is actually making a difference within the Sheffield community. Um, while also encouraging sustainability. So if you'd like to support this amazing organization, uh, please use the link in our description to make a recurring donation. Any donation is greatly um, appreciated. 
um, and that would just support Foodworks to continue the amazing work that they're already doing and that Katie and Magdalena have spoken to us about. Um, and as we've mentioned before, we really want to thank our donors. So once you donate, please forward your confirmation email to sustainabilityseriouspod at outlook.com and you'll be entered our competition to win an amazing, uh, luxurious kitchen hamper, uh, which is absolutely great. Um, so thank you very much to you two. This is the last episode of the sustainability series. Um, and um, thank you and stay safe. And thank you, Roberta and your team uh, at Sheffield Hallam University. You've done an amazing job in really highlighting the work that uh, Foodworks do in Sheffield. And, you know, we, we've heard today how much it does support to um, two different families here. So well done and, uh, and more power to you as, you as you finish your university studies and go into the big wide world. And uh, best, of luck, best of luck to you. Thank you, David. Thank you, Katie thank and Magdalena. You, Roberta, thank you, Katie. Thank you, Magdalena. And uh, keep in touch. Thank you Definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.